We are live. All right, looks like we are live in the Facebook group. I just want to welcome my mentor, uh, just crushing it in the, the digital marketing world, Brad Schildkraut um, with CBF Consulting. Um, Brad, just tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of your journey and story, man. Yeah, what's going on, man? Happy to be back for uh, for round two. I know we had a little bit of a, a rain delay on the first one. I was having uh, some internet connection, so good to... Uh, Good to finally get in here and, and provide some value with some some clear internet, some clear connection, and and thanks for having me in here, man. Um, so yeah, let me let me tell a little bit more about kind of my background and, and what I do and and kind of the people who I help. So this might be uh, I'll try to keep this as brief as possible. It's kind of a a long winded story, but um, I actually started out my essentially business career working in the finance industry. So I graduated from college with a finance degree, and I was working in Washington D.C. Um, essentially as like a financial consultant for some government contractors. So I was doing stuff with the Department of Defense, um, Navy intelligence, stuff like that. Um, sounds complicated and fancy, but it really wasn't. I was essentially just working on Google Sheets, Excel spreadsheets all day, doing reports for, you know, people. Um, and I did about a year of that type of work and realized pretty quickly, like, man, this is not it. This is not the thing sitting in front of an office computer all day, you know, reporting to five different bosses, um, you know, just collecting the same paycheck at the end of the week is not it for the long term. So I did that for a year um, and I was out um, and I, I quit that job kind of on a whim and I moved to Thailand. Um, I had a couple thousand dollars in the bank and it was like, hey, I'm going to fresh start everything. I'm shooting it out to Thailand and I'm just going to become a teacher and see what happens. Right. I always knew I wanted to kind of start something up for myself. And that was really my first big jump off was that. Um, and I spent a year and a half living in Thailand, right outside of Bangkok, um, working as a math teacher, actually. And I had no training as a math teacher at all. I got thrown right into the fire with like 35, 16 year old Thai children who kind of speak English, kind of don't. Um, that's why I kind of learned like the teaching process and like how to teach people and how to educate people and how to walk people through, you know, the steps of learning. And that was an awesome experience because I got to spend a lot of time traveling around Asia. So I went to, you know, India, Nepal, Hong Kong, Singapore, all these places in Asia, which kind of opened my mind and expanded my mind to really the possibilities of what you can do and, you know, how you can live and how you can generate an income. Um, and kind of all throughout that time, I was starting and failing to build online businesses. And this was like a year long process. So I had a travel blog at one point and I, I couldn't monetize it. I had a drop shipping store that was making a little bit of money, but you know, we're talking a couple hundred bucks, not anything that's a sustainable income. Um, and I was doing that for a while. One thing leads to another I end back, um, end up back in the U S and that's when I actually got into high ticket sales. And essentially what I was doing is I was the person on the phone closing high ticket digital products. So $3,000 digital info products. The first products that I was working with was a YouTube ads course, um, a Facebook ads course, and a sales training course. And I started doing that and I would just spend my whole day on sales calls, just trying to collect people, collect cash on the phone, get people into programs and help to educate people on whatever they were looking to be educated with. Um, and I started to learn inside of another growing business that at the time was doing, you know, 50, $60,000 a month. And they kind of blew up to $400,000 a month in like a three or four month period. So I was able to spend some time inside a growing company and see how that works and see how the process goes and people coming on and the team's growing and things getting automated and stuff like that. And that's where I did a lot of my kind of learning on, you know, the basics of a, a small business. Um, and then from there, I kind of pivoted towards affiliate marketing because essentially what I was doing was only the sales side. So I wouldn't generate any leads. I wouldn't find any customers. I was only doing sales, but I saw an opportunity like, Hey, I can generate leads. I can find people who are interested in these products. And then I can also sell them on the phone and learn what's called the end to end sales process where you do everything right. And you're, you're doing a lot of this now, Eric, where it's like, you start to generate leads and you nurture those leads and you put content in front of those leads. And then you talk to those leads on the phone, you provide them value and you close them into your programs. Um, and that's how I kind of got into the, the full affiliate marketing and sales side. Um, and I was doing all of this on Facebook. So I was running, you know, pretty solid months full-time on Facebook 
um, just finding leads that way. And then I got on the TikTok um, and I was like, man, this, this, this platform is the easiest place in the whole world to generate leads. Um, and I started doing some affiliate marketing on there for about two or three months. I, I grew my following um, relatively quickly. And then that's when I started launching my first digital products. So I launched my first coaching offer. I had a couple iterations of my coaching offer, teaching funnel building and things like copywriting. A lot of the stuff that you're teaching now, Eric. Um, and then I built my first digital product, which was an online course teaching people how to do affiliate marketing and how to build digital products. And I scaled that up relatively quickly. And then I kind of hit this point where I was like, okay, I'm kind of capped at what I want to do. I want to work with a different type of audience, right? I don't necessarily always want to work with just the people who are looking to make their first dollar online. And that's when I partnered up with my partner, Nina, uh, Nina Brennan, and we created CBF Consulting. And this was about five months ago or so. And now we work with people who are launching uh, coaching offers. We work with affiliate marketers. We work with people who have uh, SEO agencies. We work with brick and mortar businesses. And essentially what we do is we help service-based businesses to build and scale effectively leveraging outbound messaging, leveraging systems, leveraging automation so that they can have their business, they can outsource, they can throw automations in their business and grow it so they're not tied living inside their business forever so they can start to remove themselves from their business. Um, so that's kind of what my, my path has been. I try to keep that as brief as possible, um, but it, there's a lot of kind of iterations of that, but that's kind of where I started and where I'm at right now. Perfect. So my, my real quick question, what's your take on a brand new affiliate marketer just getting into the business or even somebody that's in the business and not making sales? What's your, what's your suggestion on paid ads versus like organic outreach and trying to target your audience organically? That's a good, that's an awesome question. Um, and, and I have a good perspective because I actually kind of started on the paid ad side first. And my recommendation would be do not start on the paid ad side first ever um, if you're doing affiliate marketing, because it's a very easy way to lose a lot of money very quickly if you don't know what you're doing. Um, the complexity of paid advertising, if something like Facebook ads or something like YouTube ads or something like you know Google ads, um, if you don't have any experience working with an ad platform like that, there's a lot of learning curve. And what that learning curve is, is essentially you burning cash, trying to figure out how these platforms work, because you need to understand the software. You need to understand your targeting. You need to have a good creative or a good ad. You need to have good copywriting involved. There needs to be, if it's a Facebook ad, good visuals involved. If it's a video ad, it needs to be clear. It needs to be concise and things like that. So um, I would never recommend anyone to start with paid ads. Paid ads are actually the last thing you should do when you're starting to scale a business. Everyone should start organically. In my opinion, TikTok's a great platform to start. I'm not on TikTok anymore. I was on TikTok for a while. Facebook's an awesome platform to start as well. Combining Facebook and TikTok is a really good platform as well. And then, you know, what you're going to kind of do from there as you grow and Eric, you're entering into this process right now is you start to outsource leveraging virtual assistants. So you can bring on team members who are working abroad, pay them a lower rate, have them do things for you, generate leads that way, and then start to push to paid ads well down the road. So yeah, if you're someone who's just getting into the game, um, I would definitely steer clear of paid ads unless you have a lot of experience running them before, or you're, you know, you understand these systems dialed in, you have a marketing background and things like that. Um, my recommendation would be definitely start things off organically. I think you're on uh, I think you're on mute. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. I was finding that hundred percent Trent. Yeah. Um, I tried paid ads when I first started this little adventure working, running off YouTube, trying to learn off that and trying to promote builder all and just really struggling with paid ads. And I just didn't make any money. I spent a lot more than it was worth and uh, finding out now that I just went organically from the beginning. So yeah, for sure. So like, okay. So when it comes to like a digital product and a physical product, right. Mm -hmm. So and, and affiliate and, and, and affiliate marketing, when affiliate marketer comes into the business and promotes another person's product, do you find that being a good starting point for a person getting into the business um, working off somebody else's uh, digital product and then journeying into maybe uh, your own physical product or, or, or service 
Um, what's your take on like, you know, what, what would be a good roadmap for a person just starting out or a person that's even struggling uh, with affiliate marketing? What would be like the next step? What would you tell a person that's struggling or starting out? Because it's kind of like the same spot. Yeah, a hundred percent. So it's like, you know, you're, let's say you're a person who's starting out and like looking to make your first dollar online, right? Like you're like, Hey, I'm working my job. I don't like my job. I want to get out of it. Or maybe you just want to side hustle. You're looking for some extra income. There, there's tons of business models right out there that you can do. If you're, if you're looking to build an online business, right? You can do things like drop shipping. You could do Amazon FBA. You could do blogging with affiliate links. You could do affiliate marketing on TikTok. You could do high ticket sales. Like there's so many ways to go, but affiliate marketing is an, is an awesome place to start. And here's why. When you do affiliate marketing, essentially you only have to do one side of the business, right? So you only have to do more or less lead generation. And that's really it, right? Lead generation and front end marketing. The whole fulfillment side of the business is done for you. The actual delivery of the product is done for you. The sales process is generally done for you as well. And that side of the business is actually the most difficult part, right? So you're setting yourself up when you start off by doing affiliate marketing already in a position to be successful because you're only doing a small portion of the business. Now, as you start to grow and expand, and this is what you know we've been working on, Eric, over the last, at this point, probably four or five months, and you're crushing it right now, is doing affiliate marketing and then expanding and having your own business kind of side to side with the affiliate marketing. And you have two sides of your business, right? So you're, you're sending people to affiliate offers, and then you're also doing some coaching and consulting on the side. And it usually starts out at, you know, doing one-on-one coaching and then group coaching. And then as you go, you can build out a digital product that could be an online course that could be, you know, a mastermind community, things like that. So you can start to essentially generate more revenue for your business and learn that second half of the business, the fulfillment side of the business, the sales side of the business, the system side of the business, integrating things into your business, because that's more of a long-term mindset, right? Whereas affiliate marketing, from my perspective, and, and I'll say this, like take this from one person's perspective, right? Affiliate marketing, from my perspective, is a stepping stone business, it gets you into the make money online world. It teaches you high income skills that you need to learn to be successful, to have an online business. And it puts you in a really good position to be successful. And then you can start to grow from there, right? And start to launch your own things from there and eventually transition away from just doing affiliate marketing. Now for my business, we sell our own digital products. So we have you know, a coaching program, a course, we also do consulting with a couple seven and eight figure businesses as well, kind of on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but we also have affiliate links. So we have affiliate links inside our Facebook group. We do email marketing with affiliate links. We have affiliate links inside of our course. So we still do affiliate marketing, but 95% of our revenue comes from our business specifically. And then we generate a, generate a little bit of side revenue from affiliate marketing as well. So that's kind of the transition, like longer term approach. And I know a lot of people listening to this might be like thinking like, man, that, I haven't even started yet. I don't know what this guy's talking about, um, which is fine, right? Like it's, it's a starting point and kind of a longer term mindset. And that runway is going to be six months, 12 months, two years, five years for some people. But that's kind of the progression that you can go through from being like, hey, I have a side hustle to like, man, I got a business running 30, 40 K a month right now on automation. And I just have a team underneath me. And that's kind of the point that a lot of people want to get to. Absolutely. Um, so um, with that being said, for the, for people out there that are in this business or in affiliate marketing and they're struggling, they're not seeing traction. Um, you know, it, it could come in their messaging. It could come in their content, but either way, consistency is key. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about consistency, how much content, do you need to put in front of a person in order for them to be considered like to take it from a cold to a warm, to actually a raging fan or a buyer? Yeah, absolutely. And you're spot on like consistency is, you know, and I've seen a lot of affiliate marketers. I've worked with a lot of affiliate marketers in the past, <laughs> seen a lot of affiliate marketers fail as well. And the affiliate marketers who fail are not consistent. It is the most important thing. And you have to give yourself six to 12 months. It's not like, oh, I put out, you know, a TikTok video for three weeks 
every day and I haven't made any money yet. It's like, do that for six months and then come back. And if things aren't working, then you can start to adjust from there. But consistency is the key. If you're doing Facebook, you got to be sending outbound messages every day. If you're doing TikTok, you got to be putting out three to five a day, every single day. That's going to put you in a position to actually be successful. It's not a get rich quick. Get rich quick doesn't exist, right? Anyone who says, you know, get join my get rich quick, the fastest way to 10K a month, blah, blah, blah. Red flag, right? It takes time. It takes energy. It takes effort. It's difficult. There's a lot of failure involved. You're going to have to push through. So come at it with that mindset. But what we teach and, and you, you know, implemented a lot of this into your business as well is what we call the seven hour rule. And kind of the theory behind this is that anyone who's going to purchase a high ticket product, let's say a $2,000, $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 product, they're not just going to see a TikTok video, click a link, watch a, a five minute video, and then just say, okay, I'm going to get on a phone with someone and I'm going to give them three grand. These people need on average about five to seven hours of content placed in front of them, high value content before they are going to close with you on the phone. So this could be TikTok lives. This could be Facebook lives. This is a sales call. This is a discovery call. This is YouTube videos. This is embedded videos that you have in click funnels. This is what we're doing right now, lives with other people, interviews in the Facebook group, and just getting yourself out there in front of people because that builds like and trust, right? And you never want to sell something to anyone if you don't have that like and trust and rapport developed with them because then you're just doing aggressive sales tactics, right? You're just trying to get people through the door, collect cash. What you do when you implement this seven hours of content into people is you remove a lot of friction from your business and you make your sales process much easier because people will get on the phone with you and it's like, oh man, I've been following you for four months. I, I go to every one of your lives and you, I'm sure you see this a ton, Eric. Mm -hmm. Like people even say, I'm sure they say to you like, man, I feel like you're like a celebrity. I've seen all of your stuff. And then you get people on the phone and they're in the state where they just trust you, right? This guy yeah. knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's doing. You know, I feel comfortable investing instead of the other approach, approach where I see a lot of people take is like, man, just try to push this sale as fast as possible and get this person through the door. And then you end up selling something to someone when they're really not qualified for it, it's really not the right thing for them at that time. And that might make you more money in the short term, but that's going to be the death of your business in the long term, right? Because then you're going to have angry customers. They're going to be like, man, I was working with this guy, Eric, and man, he just scammed me out of money and all that type of stuff. And like, you don't, you don't want that. You want people to go, man, I work with Eric and I watched this stuff. I built trust with him. I invested with him and he massively over delivered. And that's when you're going to collect case studies. You're going to get testimonials. And that's really how, what's going to fuel your business and help your business to grow. Absolutely. And so when we talk about, okay, put content in front of the people, let's put content out. Well, what does that mean exactly? What type of content are we trying to put in front of our audience in seven hours, right? So what do I do when I make my fake Facebook post, right? Is there, like, is there some kind of like rule, like a, some kind of like do a percentage of like value to a percentage of like sales to a percentage of whatever, you know, what, what's a good uh, base to work off of when you're building your content. So you don't like get overwhelmed or run out of ideas. Yeah, that's awesome. This is, it's, it can be difficult, right? Especially if you're a beginner, but you always want to be kind of building up that, that bank of content, right. And just kind of learning, right. Being a student of the game, so like a, what you do a really good job of, Eric, is you you follow the learn, do, teach method, right? So you learn a lot of new stuff, you implement new stuff into your business, and then you go out and teach these things to your clients or teach these things on live. So, you know, if you're starting out at this base level and your knowledge base is like, I only know really how to do click funnels and I only really know how to make TikTok videos, that's fine. That's, a, that's where basically everyone starts if they're doing affiliate marketing but start to teach these types of things. Learn a little bit more about click funnels. Learn a little bit more about, you know, maybe doing Facebook outreach or, or creating TikTok videos properly. Learn a little bit more about copywriting and start to create some content around these things. Longer form content, shorter form content, it doesn't really matter what it is as long as you have high valuable content that you're putting in front of these people. And I'd encourage everyone to think of it kind of this way. So there's kind of this this skewed thinking at times where it's like, this is marketing and this is sales. 
And like, it's the two separate divisions, right? Where it's like, Hey, mm-hmm. I do marketing. And then like there's sales over here, but marketing and sales are very intertwined. So the process could be something like this. Like this, this is a standard process that a lot of our leads have gone through who've closed at high ticket purchase. See our videos on TikTok for three months. Don't do anything. After the third month, they click on the link. We get their email address. We send them emails. They might see a first YouTube video. They might join our Facebook group. They might see a Facebook live with us. Then they see another video, YouTube video. Then they see another TikTok. And this might be month four, right? And now they're interested. And they're like, oh, what? you know what? I'm going to schedule a call with these guys and see what they have to offer. Then they get on a call with us, 30 minute call. We explain to them what we do. We provide them some value. And they're like, yeah, this is awesome. I'm not ready to buy just now, but like, I'm very interested in what you guys have to do. Sure. Awesome. Check out the Facebook group again, more stuff in the Facebook group. They see more emails. They might see another TikTok. Maybe we send them a message on Facebook with a video, schedule another call, close the deal. Like that's how the process works. And it's like, I'm not exaggerating when I say all of those touch points, right? Because it's, it never works out where it's like, boom, boom, I'm coming through and I'm giving you three grand right away. You got to have these touch points with people and you can shorten what's called the sales cycle by having a lot of this stuff on automation, right? Where it's like, you don't have to manually send stuff out to people and you're, you're starting to implement a ton of this into your business. Like you're embedding content in certain places where it's people are just kind of seeing you all over the place. You have this kind of omnipresent feel and that will shorten the sales cycle from maybe, you know, three months from first touch point to one month to touch right. first touch point. And that's actually going to decrease your costs as a business owner because you have to essentially spend less time to acquire that customer. So you should always be trying to shorten that, but understand that that sales cycle for some people might be two weeks, but for some people it might be eight months, nine months down the road before they actually purchase anything. Mm -hmm. And what you'll start to build is this snowball effect in your business where you'll just have more and more people coming who've seen your content over time and that will help to grow and feed your business. So when you're talking about content and, and, you know, how to put all this together and how to, you know, organize it and all that stuff for a person that's just starting or a person that's struggling, where do you recommend they get their information and, you know, their value from where would be a good place to start looking or, you know, you know, even can be a Facebook group, but you know, what, where should a person start going to find this information other than just waiting for lives or just hoping, you know, to get lucky on a video? Yeah, that's a good question. And, and here's the reality of the situation. And I'm, I won't sugarcoat this anyone for anyone because I'd be doing people disservice if I, if I did, but you just have to make investments into your business. If you want to learn like that, that's it. What making investments into your business does is it shortens your learning curve by months. Right. And you've done this, Eric, you invested in high ticket programs. You've invested in a couple of our programs. And what it's done is it's, it's shortened your learning curve where it's like, man, I'm spinning my wheels. I'm trying to figure this out. Things aren't working. And once you start to make investments from people who actually know what they're doing, right? People who are six months, maybe two years ahead of you, exactly where you want to be, you can just learn what they do, right? And we've invested at this point, $30,000, $40,000 directly back into our business with coaches and mentors who are beyond where we want to be. And that's how we've learned a lot of these things. And then we can pass this knowledge onto our clients as well as we're building our business. So it's like, I understand that a lot of people might not have like a budget to invest in things like that. And you can get started on a lower budget, but generally, if you really want to start to accelerate things, if you want to turn this, you know, maybe side hustle or extra money into a legitimate business, there's going to be kind of this point where you're going to have to make some sort of investment And generally what happens is when people make that investment, that's when they start to see a lot of traction and that's when things start to really change and and explode for their business. Okay. So now that you're touching on the investment part, um, I want to touch a little bit like on accepting somebody as a mentee or finding a mentor, right? Because you're not going to click with just everybody, right? Mm -hmm. I've uh, turned down money because a person wanted to make money real quick. They expected something that I couldn't deliver. And so for anybody out there, um, I highly recommend you do invest in yourself, not with me specifically, but find somebody you can relate with. And I want Brad to touch on that because I came to Brad four or five months ago, struggling, learning off YouTube only, um, you know, doing these free webinars, all this stuff. I had 
I had a little bit of information in my head, but I didn't know how to put the pieces together. Within two weeks, three weeks of Brad working with Brad, I had high ticket sales. Um, we're talking about a coaching offer, you know, just all these pieces got put together. So let's talk a little bit about like trying to find that, that specific or that good mentor that you can work with and relate with. That's not going to sugarcoat things, right? So what, are you, what, what would you look for in, in a mentor? Yeah, that, that's great. And, and it, it really depends on your personality. Like for, for me, I have two mentors right now and they're both under the age of 30, I think. And they both have businesses that are running millions of dollars a year. Right. And they're, they're big investments for us to, to put into mentors like that, but they've scaled multiple businesses before they know how to grow businesses. They know what they're doing. And they both have this straight, direct, forward means of communication, which is what I want as a business owner, right? That might not be for everyone, but they're like, I come to them with questions and they're like, Brad, don't do that. You're fucking that up. Do this, do this, do that. Implement this, go take action on this. Come back to me next week. Let me know what you've, what's changed or happened or the feedback that you've received. And then we can go from there. And it's like, great. That's what I want. I want someone to tell me what I need to do so I can start to act on things and I can start to move. Now, for some people, they might not want that direct style of communication, right? They might be newer in the game and they need a little bit of kind of hands-on help, a little bit more, maybe more of like a done for you, done with you type of service. But it's really important. And I have a question for you, actually. It's really important to find someone, like you said, that you click with and that you can communicate with well and that you trust and then invest with that person. But what was it for, for you? Because um, I know you were... At the time, we actually, we weren't even taking on any more clients and you were in my DMs on TikTok and you're like, man, get, I want to get on the phone. I want to work with you. I want to do, and I was like, okay, and if this guy's coming to me and he's like, I really want to work with you, like take the call, you know, see, see what he has to say and things like that. So what was it for you that was like, man, I, I want to work with Brad initially and kind of, you know, see what he can do and how he can help me. Uh, for sure. Um, so I was, I was stalking you on TikTok. I was stalking <laughs> you on Facebook and I seen your content coming out. It was just pure value. You know, basically it was just the nuts and bolts. You didn't sugarcoat nothing. Um, and I was in a program before that to where it wasn't like that. It was like, kind of like just, you run astray. And so when I seen that you were in the affiliate garden back then, um, I was interested in that. I wanted to find a program. I was tired of spinning my wheels on YouTube for four plus months, three, four months, spinning my wheels day in and day out, not getting no traction. So what resonated with me, with, with you, was that you are straightforward, you're transparent, and that, you know, you actually made time for me, right? You actually set aside on your schedule because I, I reached out to a lot of big players in this game, and they wouldn't even respond back to my DMs, right? So you were transparent. You seen that I was willing to change and willing to invest myself uh, as far as my time and, like, all that stuff. So that's what I've seen in you as far as a coach and a mentor. So I had is that, – was that your question, right? It was just, yeah, I seen the transformation, yeah. like I, I seen the transformation that you were making and through your messaging, how I could relate with it. And it actually, it catapulted my life to, you know, six figures, five figures each month consistently. So I resonate with you as a person, um, but I know you went sugarcoat and bullshit with me. So, you know, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. And that's key. And that, that's what I see with you and a lot of your clients as well. It's like, we have a similar type of communication style where it's like, at the end of the day, like it's a business, right? Like there's competition. It's, it can be tough out there, right? Most businesses are going to fail over time. And if you don't have this kind of look, and I'm not saying you have to be aggressive and like cut through it at all. I'm not saying that at all, but it's much easier to just communicate directly and transparently if you're operating in a business context, right? And this is why I think you've had so much success and built so much like and trust with your audience because you don't sugarcoat anything either, right? You give people straightforward feedback, direct feedback. Look, this is what I'm thinking. This is my opinion. This is what I think you should go do, go out and do it. And that kind of transparent approach to marketing and sales uh, is what has allowed me to see a lot of success. And a lot of my mentors and the people that I trust have this same type of kind of direct communication style. And I think it's a really important um, you know, trait of an entrepreneur and a business owner is being able to have this direct communication because a lot of times, you know, me coming from the corporate world and, you know, maybe you come from, it doesn't have to be necessarily a corporate world, but you come from a context where you, you have multiple bosses and things. There's a lot of kind of politics that goes on, right? There's, you know, you have to, you don't necessarily want to confront your boss with this thing. 
You got to kind of skate around how you're going to talk to someone who might be at a lower tier than you. And that's kind of like a larger organization's context, but from like a coaching and mentorship program, you really just want to be direct and get right to the point, right? You don't want to have to skate around things and stuff like that. So um, I think that approach is really for me specifically and for you specifically is, is the style that we prefer. Um, but that's not for everyone, right? The most important thing is like find the people that have the style of communication and then the teaching methodologies that resonate with you and go ahead and invest with them because they're going to help you to be the most successful. Yeah, you're on mute again, brother. I got this little, <laughs> click, I got this little clicker button here. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, that's well said because, you know, I, I've actually reached out to other mentors and, and talked to them about their programs and kind of like their style and uh, didn't really like it. But either way, uh, when you guys engage with people and you guys want to actually execute and get to this, the, the, the point of like you either quitting your job as fast as possible, um, the investment part, you know, it sucks. I started with the seven dollar investment, but either way, um, if you're in that if you're in that position right now, you you resonate with somebody and you think they can like help guide you and coach you to the next point, you know, it's one of those things. That it's time to invest in yourself and you'll see results. Um, and until then, you know, you might be spinning your wheels, but a good community and a good Facebook group because it's not all about the investment. And, and I, I still help people and you still help people that do not invest in themselves. You still build value and you bring them into a community where they are still, you know, appreciated and they still can learn. Right. And so what's your take on, you know, obviously you said omnipresence, but having a Facebook group and building that value and that authority figure, right. Showing and taking people from a platform like TikTok where it's sh short term content, take them to a larger uh, long form content. So how is impo how important is that to nurture your, your, your clients and all that stuff and build and bring that value and transparency? Yeah, that that's the key really, um, is building a community, right? Because building a community allows you to have that long-term sustainability. And yeah, something like TikTok is a, it's a short term platform, right? It's, it's quick videos, it's short videos, and you can't effectively nurture your leads. And what I mean by that is, you know, it ties in with the seven hour rule we were talking about earlier, where it's like, people need to see more content to develop that like and trust with you. And inside of a Facebook group or on a YouTube channel, or even something like a discord, that's where people are going to be exposed to more of your longer form content, more of your high value content. And that's how you really start to build this snowball effect for your business. And with almost all of our clients, the first recommendation that we have them do is send all of their leads to a Facebook group or a community building type of asset, because we want them to start to build that online community instead of just sending them straight through a funnel, straight to a link. We want to send them somewhere where they can get higher value. And that type of approach, we've been leveraging that approach for months. A tons of our clients have had a lot of success with that approach because it, it, it shifts your mind into the long term right? It's no longer, let's try to collect as much short-term cash as possible. And it's more of the long-term thinking of, let's start to build real trust with these leads. Let's start to really nurture them with high value content in front of them so that they'll end up actually purchasing something from us down the road because we've built that like and trust. Yeah, man, you're on, you're on mute again. <laughs> So we have, we have 10 minutes left on this call. No, at, least, at, at least I'm consistent. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so go. we have like 10 minutes left on this call. So what I want to do is we have some questions inside the chat. If you guys are viewing this, I probably should have said this in the beginning, but if you're viewing this on replay, put replay in the comments. And right now I would like everybody that has comments to, to post them. And I'm going to go through right now and see what we got going on. So um, let me see here. Good morning to Tammy. She's one of my mentees. Awesome. Killing it. Willis says morning. Uh, Jeffrey Han. He's uh, he's, a, he's one of our ment or one of your mentees as well. Uh, morning says uh, Jonathan. Great advice. Thank you, Brad. Or Matt says bring the fire. Matt says he's sorry you missed this morning. Um, Jonathan says agree with you in saying about investing in yourself and your business. And then Tammy says how should content and Facebook groups differ from TikTok content? Yeah, that's a good question. So there's kind of a mix of content in a Facebook group that you're going to want to do. So you're going to want to have longer form content. So this could be copywriting content, like longer form messaging content. 
you're also going to want to have longer form video content. And this could be lives like what we're doing right now, like a live interview in your Facebook group. I know you've went live with uh, some of our other clients that are in our community, like Bar McGowan and people like that, who we work with at CBF to, you know, just provide value to people. Um, you could even take your TikTok videos, put them inside of your Facebook group, because not everyone is going to see all of your videos. We do stuff like that. Um, engagement type of posts. So asking people questions, um, what do you need help with the most in your business? Or what's the number one thing you're looking to learn in this group? Something like a poll. Um, I'll put like a quiz once in a while in my group where it's like, I'll ask a question and then have people respond to that question to build engagement. Um, so it's kind of this combination of like engagement posts, longer form copy, shorter form videos, longer form videos. Um, but when you're just starting with a Facebook group, keep it basic, right? You don't have to have this big comprehensive system that you're doing. Just make, you know, a post every day or every other day, maybe, um, you know, a longer form content, maybe a five minute video, maybe you go live in there once a week, um, things like that. Um, that's all you have to really do to get things started. And then just start to engage with those people in your group. And over time, you can start to develop a content strategy where it's more kind of systematized, right? And, and something that I do in my group is, um, I like to batch my content. So I will make all of the content one day for my Facebook group and schedule it out for the whole month. So I don't even have to touch it at all. All that content's done in three or four hours for the whole month. And then I just let that content just run automatically. And all that I do is I have, you know, I go in there myself or I have my team go in there and engage with people in the group, get them in the DM, start to get them to a call and start to nurture those leads. Yeah. And that's just it. Um, from what we, you know, you taught me is, you know, once you start basically putting these, uh, these engagement posts inside your Facebook group, it'll essentially start running itself. Because if you ask people if they're struggling with anything, or if you uh, insist basically on people asking their questions in the Facebook group, that's going to build content for you. And so um, that's a super powerful gold nugget right there is just use engaging content to where people ask questions and you answer them through long-term content through uh, t uh, YouTube videos or whatever. So there's a little gold nugget on building content and uh, try to document everything, everything. All right. Is there any other, any other questions in the Facebook group at all? I know we got 10 people, 11 people now um, for you guys that are just joining in. We have Brad Schildkraut, my mentor, um, CBF consulting. He's uh, if you got, you know, honestly, if you guys are ready and at that level to where you want to, you know, if you're at a, a say, if you're at, one to 5k a month and you're ready to scale your business to the next level um and talking about you know really dive deep into what we're talking about now um definitely brad is the person to check out because uh he has scaled my business um not just one but two i have an affiliate marketing business plus a coaching and mentor business uh so i consider that too to a lot of money and so um, not that I'm trying to pass anybody off, but I want to see people get the best value in my community as possible. So that's why I'm going to bring these strong pillars of the community inside to teach the right way to market and advertise. So you're not breaking your back or your bank. And so, you know, here's another question right here. How, how do you determine what friend request to accept on Facebook? Yeah, good question. So we will, we have a question, prompting questions in our Facebook group. Um, to just ask essentially qualifying questions to determine who these people are. We also do email capture in our Facebook group and we have an automation that we essentially takes them automatically from putting their email into our Facebook group, sends them to an email list, puts them on an email sequence. Um, but as far as like choosing who to accept and not, we will, there's a couple like no's, right? Like we will accept 90% of people into our Facebook group. The people we won't accept are people who just blatantly disregard all of the questions um, or people who could be high risk of like spam, right? So if they're in like 500 Facebook groups, probably don't want to add them. If they just created their Facebook account a week ago, probably don't want to add them. If you go to their profile and things just kind of look a little sketchy, you make a determination like, I don't know, this, this person might be, you know, a spam bot, right? Account probably don't accept those people, but generally we're not terribly strict with people who we let in. Um, we have had instances where it's like people will try to like sell things in our group and then we just decline their posts and just remove them from the group. Right. So it's not a big deal. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about, you know, kind of accepting the right people into your group. Just make sure that they're not in there to just spam out your group essentially. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So for a person that's just getting into business, this is like the last question or so, that's because this comes up a lot. How many hours realistically, if you're working a nine to five and you just want to start, you'll get your funnel going, you just want to start with, you know, whatever it may be, or it could be another side hustle. It could, doesn't even have to be affiliate marketing, but just starting somewhere, getting that motivation and getting that consistency rolling. What do you recommend starting out with a person that's working 40 plus hours a week? How many hours each day do you, you recommend at least applying to your business? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm probably not the best person to ask that question because it's difficult. Um, but like, you know, at least an hour a day put into it. Right. Or maybe, you know, five hours a week, six hours a week to, to get going. Right. But it's all about consistency, right. It's all about showing up every day. That's, what's going to differentiate you. And obviously the more time that you put into your business, the more output you're going to get, but we really go for optimization with everything. So we try to minimize the amount of time that we work but maximize the output of work. So we are very, we're very scheduled. Everything's scheduled out within our entire day, hour to hour. We know exactly what we're doing. At the beginning of each week, we know exactly what the goals are for that week because that allows you to be optimal, right? Where I see a lot of people struggling in the beginning is like they just open up their computer and they don't really know what to do, right? And then they end up scrolling through TikTok. They look and read in someone's Facebook group. They comment on someone's TikTok and maybe they post one thing somewhere. Where it's like, if you, if you set intention in the beginning of week, if it's like, okay, I'm going to do three TikToks every single day, I'm going to make a post in my Facebook group every single day, you can sit down to work and just be optimized to have that type of output. So I would encourage you to not necessarily think of it from the amount of time that you're spending on your business, but the amount of output and the, the amount of movement and the amount of action that you're bringing into your business, because I know people who've been in business, you know, who have been trying to build businesses for five years, right? Who are well below people who've been in business for eight months, right? It doesn't matter how much time you've been in business. It matters how much action you've taken and how much output you've had in your business. So don't think that, you know, I have to be putting all this time and all this energy into it. Think of it from the standpoint of what can I do to plan effectively, to optimize my schedule effectively. So if I have that one hour a day after work or before work, I know exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to be done with it. And I know what I'm going to do the next day. So plan ahead, understand what you're doing and why. And this is where kind of the mentorship comes into it, right? Because a, a good mentor will be like, this is really what you need to do. And then you can put a plan together so that I know that's kind of not a direct answer. Um, yeah. That's kind of our, that's kind of our approach to things is really go for that optimization of output. All right. We're going to squeeze for the last two minutes. We're going to squeeze one last question in from Jonathan. Um, he's this dude, he's got content that's coming out. His, his funnel looks good. He's doing, he's doing well. Um, Jonathan, if you're not in Brad's Facebook group, I'm going to send, I'm going to put it in the link, but either way, Jonathan's question was, I've been struggling with engagement when started, uh, when starting my Facebook group or my group, any advice? Yeah. So first thing you're going to want to do, and these are immediate action steps to take. First thing you want to do is everyone who joins your group, send them a message, add them as a friend, send them a message. Hey, welcome to the group. Do you have any questions? And we were actually just talking about this in our mastermind call before this, Eric. Hey, welcome to the group. Do you want me to send you over a free video, free training, free YouTube video, whatever it is. Um, start building that rapport with them. That's going to help engagement in the group and then engagement type of posts. And what I mean by that is what I was talking about earlier is questions, right? Ask people questions in the group, do polls in the group. If someone comments in your group, answer the comment, right? Just start to build up some of that engagement in your group going live as well. Um, we go live in our group at least twice. Um, we do digital marketing round table on Fridays. We <laughs> usually have a guest every single week and we usually do a live training every single week. So go live in there once in a while as well. And over time that will start to build engagement inside of your group. Perfect. I appreciate it, Brad. Hey, we don't, I, Brad's not lying when he's literally like on an hour to hour schedule. Like it's literally an hour and hour schedule. So it is nine 30. He has an appointment coming up. No joke. I'm going to give him probably 10 minutes or 15 minutes to prepare for it. But either way, I just want to thank you so much, Brad, for 
uh, just, just jumping in my Facebook group. I appreciate you for being the mentor that you are and guiding me to the position I'm at today. I know you didn't do all of it. I had to put in the work and that's what it takes um, for anybody out there that's struggling, that's striving to make their life better, more time and freedom. It's not about the money, but it's about basically having more time and freedom. Reach out to me if you're at the level to where you need to scale up. Reach out to Brad. Um, I will be in his Facebook group here coming up soon in the next couple of weeks or so. But either way, uh, Brad, I just want to say thank you very much for coming in. You you dropped a lot of value. And, uh, you know, this is the kind of content you guys need to put in your Facebook groups. So if you guys need me to come in your Facebook group um, and you want me to do a little guest appearance, I'm down for it. I'll help build you guys. Again, thank you, Brad. I appreciate your time for today. And everybody says thank you very much for the value. And as always, lots of value. Yeah, appreciate it, man. It's been, uh, it's been a pleasure to work with you and, and to continue to work with you in the future. And I'm excited to see where or your business is going to go in the next couple of months. Cause I know you got a lot of, a lot of things in play. So it's super, super exciting. Thanks for having me in here, man. And, and anyone who's watching this, who's interested in what we have to do, or just looking for some free value. Um, you can join our Facebook community. If you just go to my profile, you'll be able to find a link to our Facebook community. Um, you can go to our website, creativebrandframework.com. See what we have to do, schedule a call with us, get to know us a little bit better. Add me, a fr- add me as a friend, send me a message, whatever you need. Um, we're always here to help always here, especially, I know you have a lot of quality people in your group, Eric. So, um, we're always down to, um, down to help people out and and guide them in the right direction, but appreciate you having me on here, man. Um, and looking forward to, to you coming into our group here in the next couple of weeks. Can't wait, man. All right. Well, let me see here. Um, we're not, we're not muted that time. I can't wait. I can't wait this time. I can't wait. I don't think I like these. I'm gonna buy some different ones. They're just so easy to push. It's like touchy, Yeah. but either way, um, I appreciate you, man. You have a blessed day and I know you've been all over the country and you probably got more stops to go, but either way, you have a blessed day and I'll talk to you later, brother. I appreciate you, brother. Talk to you, man.